Hi guys, how are you all doing? This is the Redstone Ninja here, and today we've got something amazing to be building. So let's crack straight on, shall we? Okay, so to build a teleporter, we're obviously going to need all our redstone essentials, the comparators, the repeaters, the torches. But of course, with any redstoning thing, you're always going to need to dig up the floor first so you can get your hands dirty, put all your redstone down, and then cover it all up later. Make it all pretty last. That's rule number one. Do all your redstoning first, make it pretty last. Okay. So, how are we going to do this? Right, so when the player's inside these little telephone, te teleporter booths, not telephone booths, teleporter booths, when, it's, when the player's inside here, it's going to teleport the player about 15 blocks upwards onto the next floor. Pretty simple, yeah. But, um, some of you guys might not know how to do this, so this is for you. If you perhaps know how to do this already, then maybe skip it, but... For, for slightly more newbie-ish redstoners, here you go. So, what we're going to do, we're going to run a clock behind this command block. And run another clock behind this one. I'm sure you know how these clocks work. Basically what you do, you power a block two blocks away and then put a torch on and the clock starts ticking away just like that. Magic. Then you can get rid of your activation circuit just like that. So, I'll just do that once more. Power a block two blocks away, that's two blocks away, one, two, diagonally. Power it, and then put a redstone torch on it, and there you have your clock. So, we're going to test for the player being one, two, three blocks away from the command block. And to do that, you're going to need something called a relative coordinates. So, the beginning of the command, you might have guessed it being, is slash test for. And we're going to slash test for a player, the, the nearest player, and because it's a single player world, that's the only player. Test for the player being in the relative coordinates. Now normally you would put three numbers, like 32, 32, 32, or something, I don't know. But in relative coordinates you've always put a tilde, and then if you leave it blank, just like that, then that means um, this blank space just means zero. So in exactly the same x coordinates, Y, it's um, how many blocks up Y? It is one, two, three blocks up in the Y coordinate, and then on the Z coordinates, it's zero blocks difference. So that's basically how it works zero blocks um, to the left, zero blocks upwards, and zero blocks to the right. No, three blocks upwards. Did I say zero blocks? I don't know. So that's testing for the player being three blocks above the command block. The relative command blocks are always based off the command block, so that's three blocks above the command block. Hope you got that. So take a comparator out of there. Just basically have the same command running over this other one because this isn't exactly the same copy. In fact, what I will do is just make this one and then do this one off camera because you don't want to be seeing exactly the same thing twice. So, when the player is detected, what do we want it to do? Well, first of all, we want the player to move up how many blocks? Um, the player is going to be standing this block here, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 blocks. That's the 13th block, and then the 14th block is the block above where the player stands. So, that's 14 blocks. Hey, I was right. I thought it was about 15 blocks, but it's 14. So, first thing I'm going to want to do is slash TP at P, and then again we're going to use relative coordinates, but in the TP command, relative coordinates are relative to the player. So, we're going to teleport the player 14 blocks upwards relative of the player. So, that's just going to teleport them 14 blocks upwards. And also, we want um, a nice little sound, or uh, maybe a delay. It should probably have a delay, if you ask me. If just a small delay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to control A, control C, control V, that over there. Put a redstone repeater to set it to four ticks. So there's a little bit of a delay. It sounds a bit better in my opinion. Uh, or at least it, it looks a bit better and sounds a bit better, I suppose, if you take into account the fact 
but now we are going to use the slash play sound command to use my favourite sound in the game random dot orb so this is um, the file directory to the sound that you want it's in the sounds file in the dot minecraft folder and inside the sounds file you have the random file and inside that one it's the random folder sorry inside the random folder you got the orb file which is basically just ding so if we play that of course essential argument is at p if we play that then it's going to go ding I don't know if you can hear that at home, but there you go. So, I think this is it really. Let's just do a quick test run. Now what we don't want is for the player to be teleported when they're in this block here. It, no, no, it, good, it, it's working. So, um, if the player is in this block, I should immediately be teleported upwards. What have I done wrong? Hmm. Hmm. I actually do not know what I've done wrong here. So I'll be back once I've figured this out. Oh, no, wait, no, I know what it could be. If this completely confuses you, don't worry. Uh, because it probably won't work anyway, but let's just give it a try. Hang on a minute. One, two, three. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna take a, a closer look into this and once I've come back and figured out my stupid mistake I'll be back to tell you the correct way to write this command Okay, so after just a tiny bit of thought I've concluded that whoops Wow, Um, yeah, that's the problem with these test for commands and don't worry that was not broke I know I wasn't in the teleporter and I still got teleported, but it's not broke now you might know with the test for command you have to give three coordinates and this is the way it should be uh, written just so you know you cannot do relative coordinates with test for commands or apparently that's the conclusion I got to I don't think you can use relative coordinates in these commands but oh well here's how you do it with just normal coordinates so you do at p open your square brackets x coordinate comma no space y coordinate comma uh, no space your z coordinates, comma, and then something very important, radius. Unfortunately, you cannot set this to zero, but it means these coordinates with a radius of one block. So basically, let me just explain this very brief, very briefly. Um, I'll just use um, some red stained glass and come out here. If you test for a player being in these coordinates and set the radius to one, then you're also going to be testing for the player being in this coordinate, this coordinate, this coordinate, and this coordinate, and this coordinate. And although you cannot see it, you, it's going to test for the player being there as well. Now, this is obviously a problem if you want to test for the player being in one particular location. Except, you can test for the player being in the floor, with a radius of 1. That way, it's testing also for the player being here, here, here here and the player can obviously be in none of those places but it also tests for the player being here so now there is only one place the player can be which is the place you want it to be so the thing that happened there was there's my test for command the actual command itself tests for the player being here and I just flew into this location so it's not broken it's just that it's required that we have a radius which is a bit stupid you should be able to set that to zero, but you cannot. It does not work if you do not include it. The command just simply doesn't work. You have to have a radius. The radius can be three or five, but just leave it to one. So, this should work now. In fact, it does. We've just seen it in action. So, it plays the sound and does that. That's all very good and well, but how do we get in? Because you may have noticed from the original design that it looked like this. Well, that's what we're just going to be doing now, just a, a tiny little thing. But I'm going to need these coordinates here, um, just for references. I'll, sh I'll just use F3. F3 to bring up the coordinate screen, and I'm just going to stand here. Because, um, yeah, I need these coordinates. 
Hang on a minute. 68, 50, 60, no, 58, 64, and 3, okay, okay, whatever, that's, that's what that'll do, so what we're going to do now is do a set block command to set block this to er, uh, and the one above it to er, uh. and that's going to be activated by a button just here, I think, yeah, this looks good, it's a good a place as any, so, all we're going to do is just place a redstone behind here with two command blocks on. Whoops. And that's going to activate both of them. So, um, what were the coordinates again? 58, 64, 3. So, slash set block 58, 64, and 3 to err. Uh, and control A, control C to bring that up. Control V so we can get it again. And if we set this to 65, this should be the block above, the block that we just recorded the coordinates of. So now if we press this, it should, hopefully, delete those two um, red stained glass. Yes, yes it is working. But now we want it to also close. So what I was thinking is that it closes before you, um, before you get teleported, so you can see it close behind you. So what I'm going to need for that is, um, let me think about this. Right, this is the halfway mark, so it can't go any further than this, because otherwise it's going to go into this half. So, um, I'm going to need a, a coordinate, no, not a coordinate, a command block here and here. That's definite. I'm just going to get these, this one, put that there, and then perhaps put a repeater in between. Is that going to work? That should work. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Set that to 4 ticks. Now these are both going to be the same command as the one we just did. Control V. Oh. Hmm. Oh well. I don't know how that didn't work. I, I'm sure the last thing I control V'd was this one. Oh well. So, let's just get that back. Quite quickly. Control A, Control C. Very quickly, just get that back. And place it into here and then this is the one that's 65 so if we get that again and replace the block up below, below it which will be y coordinate of 64 with er uh, and then we got these two commands here whoops oh no was it mm, i realized my mistake now you're probably screaming me screaming at me at home oh well tp at p um it's a good job I can remember it. So that's why I couldn't paste it in. Yeah, that's just me being stupid. So, now when the, the thing is at its start, the circuit, this is the circuit in its um, starting position. So if I click this, it should open the door. It should probably make a sound as well. Let's just add that in real quick. Really quick. Slash play sound. Mm, pit tile dot piston dot out perfect okay so now it should make a piston sound when we press this um, of course imperative you put at p at the end I always forget that one okay so that's working I don't know if you heard that at home maybe I should turn the sounds up in fact I will Sounds up. That's probably going to annoy a lot of people. I'll put it back down again a bit. So, uh, yeah, but it's ready for a full test now. So let's open the door. It's opened, and then when we step inside, yeah. Um, what went wrong? Is it because I didn't have a block there? It might have been. It might have been because I just fell through it. So I'll just place that there. And I've not been teleported. It didn't. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Slash TP at P. Tilda, tilda, 14. Tilda. Hmm. I must have pressed cancel instead of done in the um, thingy magic here. 
Never press cancel, yep, always press done. So... Of course I, I cut that hole in there to make it more convenient, but under any normal circumstances, it would just appear as if I magically appeared into the next room. So let's look, watch the door close. Why didn't the door close? Why hasn't the door closed? Oh, of course. That needs to be glass. And so does this one. Glass. And then just because I want to, I'm going to put another play sound command here because after all, it's my favorite command. Slash play sound, um, tile, tile dot piston dot in. Okay, um, almost done now. Whoa. Okay, so it's closed. I suppose might as well do a full test. Just one thing missing, the um, at P, of course. It had to be that, didn't it? Same mistake twice. Oh well, I'm just going to destroy that because we know that bit works. There we go. And that's it. I'll be back in just one second once I've duplicated this over to that side. And with that, the teleporters are complete. And that's the end of the video. I'm joking. I wouldn't just not let you see the finished product. Here it is, in all its glory. I fixed up the floor, as you can see, put everything back in its place. We can't get in here, it's like, oh no, we can't get in, because it's blocked, because there's a glass block in the way. So, off you go to these buttons here. Of course, you have to have permission of the receptionist, who, actually, that would be pretty cool if I could have a villager that when you trade with him, these buttons appear. Hmm. Or maybe the buttons just are just like, they don't do anything, so when you press them, nothing happens, and then there's a villager that when you trade with him, you get like a little slip, slip of paper, and then you press the button, and then it does something, and it opens the door. I don't know, but for now, here is all that happens. We can go into here, and... As you can see, if I can manage to get in there, the door closes and we're teleported upwards. And unfortunately, as of yet, there's no way to get back down, but that's for a later episode, or perhaps even off camera, because to be honest, it's going to be technically just the same thing as this, but with also a down functionality. Um, maybe one should be up and one down, and then both of these are up, and then the one on the left is up and the one on the right's down, and then the top floor, both of them are down. Hmm. I'll think about it, but for now, here is the system itself, you've seen it in action, and that's it really. And that was the teleporter system, well, I wouldn't say a system, rather just um, just one module of it, but like I said, I will get like modules on every floor, eventually, but there's no need to rush into that now, because it's time to end the video, and as always, if you like the video, like. If you've got any comments, comment, and if you really want to, then subscribe. But apart from that, this has been the Redstone Ninja, and my work is done here.